Well, friends, good morning and welcome uh, to our very, very first Eternity Church Online. Uh, my name is Phil and it's a great privilege for me to welcome you here this morning. Um, for our, new, our, our regulars, uh, it's good to have you with us online. Uh, this, is, this is new for us, this is going to be a little different, uh, but we're so glad that you could join us. But we also want to welcome um, our brothers and sisters from Cooparoo Presbyterian Church. Uh, joining us online this morning. Uh, we're glad that you could be with us this morning and, and share this time with us. And if you're uh, watching from somewhere else, um, it's a great privilege for us to welcome you uh, to be part of our church family this morning. Well, we're going to begin our time uh, just with a few announcements. Uh, these are mostly for our regulars. Uh, so if you're joining us from somewhere else, uh, I'm sorry, just bear with us for a moment. Uh, but the first thing that we want to encourage our regulars to do, um, if you haven't already, uh, could you uh, like our Facebook page? Uh, our Facebook page and our Facebook group are how we're going to be communicating with you a lot over the next uh, few weeks and potentially months. Um, and so please uh, get on there. We know it's going to be difficult for us not gathering together physically, uh, but we want to be able to communicate with you as much as we can and to be communicating with each other. So get on the Facebook page, uh, because through Facebook, uh, also through email, is how we'll be sharing a lot of information um, in this, this new season of our church and of life in general. Um, hopefully this week we're going to be thinking about how we can do uh, life as a church a little bit differently. Um, so we're going to be sending out information for what things you can do with your kids, uh, maybe getting our youth guys together online, uh, so do keep an eye on the online spaces. Uh, the other thing this morning is that our weekly group, so the things other than our Sunday gathering, church will be going ahead as normal. Uh, so if you're part of a community group, uh, talk to your group leader, uh, but most of our groups are continuing as normal. Our kids club and youth group and play group, they're all going ahead as normal for now. Um, if things change, we'll keep you updated. Uh, but do be taking the opportunities to uh, spend time with each other where we can. Financial giving, um, if you're used to giving uh, through cash here at our Sunday gathering, we want to encourage you to, uh, to do that online. Uh, I know for some of you that'll be a new thing, um, but if you need more information about uh, how to do that, if you need to get the details, uh, talk to Rob or myself or get in touch with Heath, our treasurer. Uh, he'll be able to help you get that set up. Uh, while we're not meeting together, um, it's good that we continue uh, the gospel ministry that we're doing, um, and it's good for us to financially support that. If you're joining us from another church, uh, we want to encourage you to continue to support your church. Uh, be our guest this morning. We're so glad to have you with us, uh, but keep supporting your own church um, and the ministry that that church is doing. Well, I think that's all the announcements that I've got. We'll be keeping you in the loop uh, throughout the week, uh, but right now I'm going to read from God's Word. Because I'm not sure how you feel this week. I'm not sure how you're reflecting on the events that uh, have been going through our news feeds and coming across our televisions this week. Maybe you're fearful right now. Maybe you're anxious. Maybe you just think all of this is blown way out of proportion and it's all a bit overkill. But whatever you're thinking, it's good for us now to spend some time dwelling on our God. And so I'm going to read... Uh, from Psalm 46, uh, where we're reminded of who our God is. So hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. 
He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Friends, wherever we're at this morning and this week, God is with us. This is our comfort. This is our hope. This is uh, what we hope that you can uh, fix your eyes on and set your hope on this week. So as we come together, to gather together now this morning, how about we pray to the God that is our refuge and our strength. Would you pray with me? Our Lord God, we are confused, we, we are scared, we are anxious about uh, the events of this week, uh, of the world that, that we're living in right now. But Lord, would you help us to take our eyes off ourselves? Would you help us to fix our eyes on you? Give us comfort knowing that you are our strength, that you are promise to be with us and that you have made yourself with us by sending your son the Lord Jesus to this broken world to save us to draw us into relationship with yourself to give us hope to give us certainty to give us life Lord enable us to dwell on these things today and this week may we live our lives sure in the hope that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Lord, we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, we're going to do church the same way that we normally do, which means we're going to have a time of singing right now. If you're watching in your lounge room, it might seem a little odd to stand and sing, but we want to invite you to do that anyway. Uh, why don't you get up, let's sing along. Uh, we're singing to our King, the Lord Jesus. So let's sing together.
morning. I'd like to read to you this morning from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There, thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And let's continue worshipping together and let's sing, Live for the Kingdom. Inspire us to creatively meet the needs of those around us. 
Give us boldness to shine your light and show your love in the midst of trials. We continue to ask for wisdom for our leaders, strength for our medical professionals, and patience for our community. Jesus, I thank you that through your sacrifice we have blessed assurance that you are ours. In your precious Son's name, amen. All right, now's the time for the kids' spot in our service. Now, so kids, uh, make sure wherever you are in the lounge room, make sure that you can see the screen because over the past month, we've been learning from the book of Acts and today the adults are going to take a break from the book of Acts, but we've been learning from the book of Acts about the power of the gospel going out into the world. And so there's a song that we've been learning and today we're going to teach it to the adults in our church. So you guys know the song. Now I needed some kids to help me do the actions and well... All I could find were these guys. So let's do the song together. Let's go, 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 go in the gospel power. All right, come on, boys, let's go. You good? Good? Lexi? Nice. nice. Here we go! Ready? Let's start the go, 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 okay? Here it comes. <laughs> Jesus bled, died, and rose from the dead. He's the life and the truth and the way. Hey, hey, may the Lord be your song as he guides you along. Every step, every breath, every day. Jesus bled, died, and rose from the dead. He's the life and the truth and the way. Hey, hey, may the Lord be your song as he guides you along. Every step, every breath, every day. Didn't my, didn't my kids do a great job? I think they did pretty good. Well, hopefully, Mum and Dad, you learned something today. Uh, but right now, we're going to keep singing.
good morning. Let's bow before our great God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are indeed in uncertain times, but we know that in all of these uncertainties, you are affecting your perfect plan in our midst. We who are your people have a sure hope and a certain future in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Your word assures us that nothing can snatch us out of your hand and nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Grandfather, that though there may be panic, uncertainty, even chaos around us, that our anchor in this storm will hold firm, that our faith will be strengthened and that our love and our walk with you will not be deflected. Grandfather, that though we are not meeting together on a Sunday, that we would be even more diligent in maintaining contact and encouraging one another and supporting one another. Our plea, O Lord, this morning is that our physical isolation would not lead to spiritual isolation and that prayer and reading your word would be enhanced and not diminished. We pray, Lord, for all our churches as they strive to do what is best for all their people. In particular, Lord, we uphold our pastors and elders as they make difficult and challenging decisions in these days ahead. And Father, we pray that you would help them to be faithful shepherds of your people. Heavenly Father, we see in your word how so often unsettling times bring great blessing. So Father, we pray that even in our present circumstances that your church would be strengthened and your people grow closer together and hold fast to you. Lord, we pray for those who are ill, especially those who are beset with medical problems. Lord, may they know your presence. May they know your care. And Lord, above all, may we be there for them, whatever their needs might be during these days and weeks ahead. Father, we lift up before you our world leaders, our medical staff, and those researchers seeking a cure for this coronavirus. We know, Lord, that these people are under tremendous pressure at this time. So we ask that you may grant them, Father, in all their collective efforts, that their efforts may not be in vain, and that, Lord, you will grant again, even to an undeserving world, the abundance of your grace and mercy in your Son. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing and answering our prayers. And Lord, may all the praise and honour and glory be to you. And it's in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we pray these things. Amen. Today's reading is from 2 Corinthians, and we're reading chapters 4 and chapters 5. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, 
so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what was written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us this spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is also known to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. And let's sing together, Be Thou My Vision.
Crazy. My name is Rob Davey. I'm the lead pastor here at our church community uh, here at Eternity Church. It's so great to have everyone uh, joining us this morning, gathering together, yes, in a very a different way, under very strange and different circumstances, but together, together, nevertheless, no matter what church, family, uh, what town, uh, what country, what language, faith in, in Jesus crosses those borders and unites us together in an incredible way. As we said earlier this week, community does, is, isn't determined. Community isn't determined by a shared facility, uh, but a shared identity, a shared belonging. Although being together physically might make community a whole lot easier, and yes, it does. Maybe this next season ahead will make the community of God's people everywhere so much stronger, so much stronger. And now is the time to live out with with boldness the faith that we so readily profess, even if that's over distance, even if that's in strange and unique ways, trusting and declaring of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, in whom our life is forever found. And so where that begins is here together, humbling ourselves uh, with anticipation under God's word. So let's do that now. Let's pray as, as we look at our passage together. Let's pray. Lord God, we want to we wanna come before you this morning. Lord, we want to come before you now. Lord, humbled by what's been going on. Lord, we want to start with your word. We want to come before you, taking our cues from you. Lord, taking our guidance from your spirit at work. Lord, we pray that you would teach us, you would grow us, you would mold us and shape us, do all those amazing things that you do through your word, by your spirit. We pray that now, wherever we are, we pray, Lord, as we open your word together, our Bibles together, you would teach us mightily. Make the Lord Jesus clear before us, that our faith would be fixed in him, our eyes would be fixed on him, or that we would step out into whatever, whatever this new week holds, being a people of the gospel, trusting in you. We pray this in your, your name. Amen. Uh, well, the coronavirus is, is redefining so much of our world today. Uh, the world we stepped into Monday morning has been flipped on its head just one week later and it's predicted to continue spinning. But amidst uh, this washing machine of changes, do you know who doesn't change? 
God. And may this be our banner throughout this pandemic, that our circumstances should never dictate all our faithfulness to God, but instead our faithfulness to God, our hope and trust in the Lord Jesus as Saviour and King should always dictate and determine how we embrace our circumstances. See, if God doesn't change, if Jesus remains the same, if the Holy Spirit who united us and empowered us last week unites and empowers us the same this week, then do you know who else must remain? Must remain the same? The people of God. Being a people of the gospel. Believing, trusting in it and living out and sharing the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, saving us from Satan, sin and death, bringing us by faith into right, restored relationship with God now and forever, transformed from eternal death and judgment into life. And no matter what the world around us, no matter the distance between us, no matter the struggle, we're to be uh, living each day as a people of the gospel, followers of Jesus, even, even more so in our current world of uncertainty and fear and loss and pain and, and struggle. So today we'll be recalling what it means to be uh, that people, uh, the people of the gospel, a people whose life isn't determined by the world around us, but by, by Jesus and by our hope and our trust in him where God would instead use us to redefine our world as we share Jesus, as we declare Jesus, as people come to know him and are saved. In his second letter to the Corinthian believers, Paul shares some amazing insight into what it means to be a people of the gospel, of what a gospel-centered and inspired community of believers looks like deep down. See, those whose faith is in Jesus are transformed by the Holy Spirit in an incredible way that revolutionizes who we are, how we see life, how we embrace one another, and how we view our place in the world. So I pray that God would teach and remind and re-energize this in us today. That followers of Jesus uh, today in this time of uncertainty when our sense of normality keeps changing with every day, that every day, no matter what, we'd step out boldly as God's people into every circumstance with a steadfast uh, selflessness and and servant-heartedness. It's a beacon of hope and life in the name of Jesus in this time of fear, for the glory of God, for the good of his people, and for the sake of the lost, that they would be saved. Uh, We're talking about being a people of the gospel. Uh, So let's get into it. Uh, Make sure your Bible is open in front of you or you've got it on your phone. Uh, Wherever you are, make sure you've got your Bible open and we want to look through this passage together. Um, be following along and seeing these verses with us as we unpack it. So let's get into it. With Paul's first insight, uh, there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, uh, 1 to 6 uh, that we're of Jesus. Now, just the chapter before this, Paul spoke of how believers uh, belong to a new covenant, a new relationship with God through Jesus. And so he carries that over here into chapter 4 in speaking of how we're to live that out. Now, there in verse 1, Uh, Paul speaks of how we're to not lose heart, talking about the struggles we might face in the world, how in the face of these moments, uh, we don't turn to disgraceful, uh, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or or tamper or misuse, abuse God's word, but instead we're to present ourselves before everyone with a clear conscience, relying on God's word in its entirety, in, in all that it says. We're to live and behave think, respond, we're to be different to the world around us, where we can honestly present ourselves in the sight of God uh, with this clear conscience that Paul is talking about, because we've behaved as he would have us, as opposed to taking our lives into our own hands. And when Paul continues uh, speaking of our lives being a witness to others of Jesus there in verse 3, where if the gospel message is veiled or unseen, rejected uh, by some, it's not because of our lack of faithfulness to it, uh, because we've twisted it somehow, or by our, our ungospel attitude of some description or actions, uh, we've, we've put people off Jesus. But the gospel re- will be rejected on the basis of people's heart and hearts to God, of those who are perishing, they, who have become blind to the gospel by sin, uh, not by us. But the answer here, the answer here is for God to unharden their hearts and minds to see the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ. The image of God, the answer here, 
is praying that God would do his work by the Holy Spirit in people's hearts. As we demonstrate and as we speak and proclaim the gospel to people's ears, uh, being a faithful witness of Jesus with our life, for we are his. As Paul continues there in verse 5, uh, what we proclaim by our words, our actions, our attitude, our unspoken things, our, our Facebook posts, our conversation behind closed doors, our very lives, how we respond to this pandemic that is going on isn't to be us, but is to be Jesus as Lord. Jesus as Lord. We're like Paul, we're to uh, live for one another, loving community for the sake of Jesus, to see him glorified and him honored, to see others' faith in him grow and mature. What does the others come to faith in him uh, for a star? We're to remove ourselves from the picture that Jesus would be the center of attention in our lives because we're his. Uh, there in verse 6, uh, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God's brought us out of the darkness of Satan, sin and death into the light of eternal life in heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. Now this might uh, seem pretty straightforward, something that we, we preach a lot, the, these concepts. But what Paul's getting at here is that everything about who we are, how we think, how we're to be motivated, how we, how we embrace one another, everything needs to be purged of selflessness. Uh, selfishness, sorry, not selflessness. Please keep being selfless. <laughs> We're to be purged of selfishness. Nothing about our life should begin from a place of, of us. Should, be, should begin from a place of us. Remember verse 5. It should always, and without excuse, begin from a place of him. From a place of him. Our congregational member uh, walked up to a pastor uh, after church, keeping good social distance, as we should be doing. Uh, a congregational member walked up to a pastor after church on a Sunday and said to him, I, I, I didn't really enjoy the worship today. Didn't really enjoy it. To which the pastor replied, that's okay. We weren't here to worship you. Is this us? Is this us? Are we selfish? Are we self-centered in how we see life, how we embrace one another, how we want them to embrace us, and how we view our place in the world? Because what Paul's getting at here is that this isn't what it means to be a people of the gospel. And that's because the gospel is a message of gracious, selfless sacrifice for the sake of sinners, to rescue them from death, to see them know life. What part of this calls us to live life where we're the center of the universe? None of it. God isn't waiting on you hand and foot like a butler. A church doesn't exist or operate according to, to our preferences. We're to be people who are of Jesus. People who in every way seek to express something of Jesus in all that we are, in all that we do, to proclaim Him, not to proclaim ourselves. Uh, so what does this mean for us today, tomorrow, this week? Uh, well, life in this world would, would say you first. But the simple truth is that if it's us first, uh, we have no hope. And we'll see that in a moment. If we're honest with ourselves and that congregational member's attitude uh, sounds a little close to home, today is the day to bring that before God in, in repentance because we've taken this gift of love and grace, this gift that he has given us, and we've spent that on ourselves instead of living for Jesus. Today is the day to, to pray and to press reset on our walk with him, that in his strength he, we would be changed to see how, how life is about is about Jesus, not about him. How we see life and how we speak and embrace others would be Jesus first. And this is so vital today amidst the crisis of our world. This is the time for followers of Jesus to be as Jesus to a world who's stumbling in the darkness in need of light, in need of more than a vaccine, uh, but more than that are in need of a saviour. As a friend said to me this week, uh, as we met for, for coffee, as God's people, we're made for this. We're made for this. This is our time. Today is the day to act with selflessness in the name of Jesus. And maybe we are aware we're truly seeking to love and serve and live for Jesus. Praise God. That's, that is awesome. So today is the day to ask that God would strengthen that in you, would give you perseverance and joy where you might be a culture setter for us as a people 
to be reminded of, of your faithfulness, to be reminded by your faithfulness to Jesus through your words and actions and your attitudes that we should be as his. We should be as his people. We belong to him and we should be shining him. Uh, Paul's first call uh, in being a gospel people is to be transformed from a life of us to a life of Jesus. Where Paul's second insight uh, follows on 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. Uh, where, that we live in, in humble boldness to God. Now, straight off the bat, uh, Paul gives us this, this great description of how we're to see ourselves, a stark reminder that if we're placing ourselves first, we have no hope. We are nothing without God. See, then in verse 7, uh, God has given us this treasure, the treasure from verse 6, the knowledge of the glory of God is in salvation, justified, righteous, restored relationship with God, been recipients of his grace and love, uh, recipients of Jesus' sacrifice for us. We have this in jars of clay. That's it. That's us. We're the jars of clay. Frail, fragile, helpless, prone to damage, with one life to live, but made, created with purpose, unique. See, as a people of the gospel of Jesus, we must live holding together two essential uh, components to live by. Humility, God-empowered boldness. Uh, first, to humility, Paul not only tells us that we're, uh, we're just jars of clay, but in verse 7, this is so that what's seen is the surpassing power of God, not us. Uh, we need to come to realize there are people of Jesus, not our own. It's a call to realize our place. Because if we, uh, um, we can act as though it's about us, but when the rubber hits the road, the truth is inevitable and unavoidable. We're jars of clay, not to act as self-sufficient, self-made golden vessels. And we have nothing to boast in uh, but our complete thankfulness and gratefulness to Jesus. Jesus and the eternal life that he's given to us by God's grace. That's our only claim. But what an amazing claim that is. Uh, we can think that humility is a weakness, but it's, but it's not. In the ways of God, our humility is an invitation for God to take up the life-giving residence He deserves in our life for His purpose, for our good, for our eternal good. But despite being jars of clay, look what Paul says in verse 8. When we're afflicted, we're not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Although there's frailty in our humanity, there's incredible power that we can have in God. One we're abundantly given by being in right relationship with Him, by surrendering to Him in humility. See, Paul wants us to realize the reality of our humanity, that we would know the lordship and kingship of Jesus over our life, that we would know uh, peace and contentment and joy and assurance and forgiveness, eternal life, that, that, that we would live out God-empowered boldness. Uh, which Paul goes on to emphasize there in verse 10, uh, boldly living for the sake of Jesus and others, other salvation. See, across our earthly lives, we're to know and grasp this humility, this thankfulness for Jesus by repenting and believing in him, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, as Paul words it, uh, living life crucified with Christ, given over to him, humbly acknowledging Jesus and all that we say and all that we do, all that we are, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our bodies. The wondrous relationship and eternal life Jesus gives us is expressed in all, uh, in all that we are, our whole lives, the, as it shapes and inspires and motivates our life here and now to be lived for him, to shine for him, to draw others to salvation. There in verse 11, uh, Paul speaks of continually giving himself over to Jesus uh, physically, spiritually, that the life he's, he's saved to live I would continue to take root, would continue to be manifested. One that brings life and hope to our world. As Paul says very poetically there in verse 12, that death is at work in us, in people giving themselves over to Jesus, that life would be in others. That our new life in Jesus would speak life into those around us. But it would be a people living the gospel, a people who are sharing that gospel through the life that they live. Which is what Paul wraps up with. Then in verse 13 to 15, speaking of the way in which someone's faith in Jesus should, uh, should lead them to speaking of Jesus into the lives of others who are then also believing 
and speaking, where they get together grow in the same spirit of faith, a loving gospel community, knowing God will raise us with Jesus into heaven. But we're excited to see the glory of God proclaimed that more and more people would all come to faith. What Paul's describing here is being a people who live in humility before all, who then move and live and share with God-empowered boldness, to see God glorified, others' faith deepened, others know Jesus, to see a Jesus-centered hope and life explode across our world of a people confident in heaven, revolutionizing how we live right now, humble, bold, selfless, hope-filled. As Paul says there in verse 16, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Each step in this life is a step closer to our home of heaven, living in perfection, all thanks to God. This momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. The things that are unseen are eternal. So what does this mean uh, for us today, tomorrow, this week? Well, what, uh, what occupies our heart? What occupies our mind, our expectations, our, our inspirations? Is it the transient or is it the eternal? Are we pinning our hopes and trusts in the ways of man? Are we seeing the state of our world uh, consumed by the loss of the material? Uh, overwhelmed by how all that we've made life about is slowly slipping through our fingers. Is this us? Or is our trust in God? Is our hope in the eternal? We prepared to face whatever comes as ambassadors of a greater cure, ambassadors of a greater hope, living humbly, selflessly, yet boldly and confident to love and serve and share, seeing our need to help others find peace with God, humbly seeking God's guidance, boldly stepping out to help and to share, knowing the eternal life that we have dispels all fear. Uh, well, lastly, uh, Paul continues taking this deeper with his third and last insight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 to 21. But how we're to live as a people of the gospel, where our lives must be lived as reconciled ambassadors. As a people of the gospel of Jesus, who are transformed by the Holy Spirit in an incredible way that revolutionizes who we are, how we see life, how we embrace one another, and how we view our place in the world. This is this is exactly how Paul calls us to walk. There in verse 16, transformed. From now on, therefore, given that in verse 14, Jesus has died for all, where all people have the right to know him as Savior, all have the right to hear of Jesus, to hear the gospel. We have no right not to share. Therefore, there in verse 16, therefore we regard no one according to the flesh. We're not to see people, our world, as though this physical, transient existence is all that matters, is all that counts. We're not to live and act and, and be motivated by how our world operates, by how our world thinks. Something Paul confesses is how they regarded Jesus. They saw him as, a, as an earthly king, as, as a rebel, as an insurgent. But having come to Jesus, as coming to see him as the divine son of God, they no longer see him or anyone now. Uh, according to this world, according to the flesh. We're to walk life with eyes that see the eternal life that is on offer for our friends, our family, our neighbours. We're to walk life inspired, uh, making decisions according to how God calls us to think and live. We're to live life and walk life speaking what's righteous, godly, good, edifying to one another, not the opposite. Paul's calling us to regard everyone and everything according to how God would have us see them, to live with the eyes and the heart and the mind of Christ. It's all coming back to that being an ambassador. This is what we represent. Because there in verse 17, those in Christ who have come to repent and believe by faith in Jesus, they're a new creation, they're born again, to no longer live as the world does, but with the eyes and the heart and the mind of Christ. Knowing that when we see others come to faith, they too are new new creations, which is eternally amazing. As a people of the gospel of Jesus, where we're a new creation, living to see others and see everyone and everything as God would, would have us see them, to see our world come to know Jesus, become new creations in eternal relationship with God. 
Then in verse 18 and 19, how Paul speaks of the transforming work of God in us as believers to save us from our sin, to restore us to righteousness. Not for us to go about our own life and do our own thing. Thanks for that, God. I've got it from here. Not to do our own thing. Uh, promising to give God, oh, we'll give you our Sunday mornings. Well, not now. But, you know, we'll give you those religious things in our life, God. We'll tick that religious box. But he's now given us that same message of reconciliation that we heard. That we would then go out into the world and live it out and share it with our world. But then in verse 20, we're now ambassadors for Christ. Who through us, God reaches out to the lost. Where our lives are to declare the message that our world needs to hear. Be reconciled to God. For our sake, he, that's God, made him Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, to embody our very rejection of God, so that in him, in Jesus' death as punishment for our sin and his resurrection as victory over our sin, through faith in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. We're welcomed into forgiven, restored relationship with our Heavenly Father. But we're ambassadors not because we've earned it, I see a friend of mine became a diplomat uh, for the Australian government where her title as an ambassador was something uh, sh she had achieved. She worked hard her entire life for it. But we haven't achieved salvation. We're reconciled. We're given, gifted faith and righteousness. We're not to be pompous, authoritarian, self-righteous people who look down upon the world who look upon everyone and everything with judgmental lies, uh, considering ourselves as the holy, the world as the unholy. But we're reconciled ambassadors who look upon the people of our world as God does with grace and love, knowing that our, our very lives are to declare and share the gospel message that has saved us of life and forgiveness in Jesus. Not boasting, humble, grateful, not in judgment, an honest desire to see our world through the eyes of Jesus, the world in desperate need of salvation, knowing that we're a people through whom God is seeking to reconcile the world to himself. So what does this mean today, tomorrow, this week? Well, what doesn't it mean, really? What doesn't it mean? At this time in our world where the buzzword is, is isolation, pray that God's people would be the opposite. Now, I don't mean do the opposite. Um, please, if if you're in isolation, we want you to stay in isolation. That's a good thing to do. Uh, but, but metaphorically, metaphorically, I pray as the world retreats, God's people would step up boldly, selflessly, loving, serving, sharing. Don't look in, but, but look out. Start with your neighbours. Start with your street. Be an ambassador for Jesus. Of all that Jesus offers, our lost and our broken and our hurting world. We have something greater than a cure. We have a saviour who's smashed fear, in who there is no death. As my friend could have said uh, when we caught up for a coffee, uh, we were saved for such a time as this to be for Jesus. Uh, being an ambassador of Christ for the gospel can be hard uh, because we live in a world that, that needs us because it's a world that's rejected Jesus, but because it's rejected Jesus, it will reject us too. And remember Paul's opening words. Having this mercy by uh, this ministry, sorry, by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. Do we believe that our world needs to hear of Jesus? Well, the only answer to that is yes. Then our world needs followers of Jesus to walk life as the reconciled ambassadors that we are forever trusting in the strength of God, walking and inspiring one another to walk this as well in loving community. I think there's no better way... There we go. I think there's no better way uh, to sum up uh, who we're to be as a people of the gospel, a people of Jesus, a people who are no longer born for ourselves, awaiting an eternal death, uh, but a people now through faith in Jesus, born again of God, of the Holy Spirit, to receive eternal life and the glories of heaven, to walk our world with hope and life, and to, to give. There's no better way to sum this up uh, than with the words of God through Paul in verse 14 and 15. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, 
that one Jesus died for all. Therefore, we all have died. As in, we all have the right to know Jesus as the Savior, the King. We all have the right uh, for us to proclaim and share the gospel with, with them. Verse 15, And he died for all, that all who live, those who come to faith in Jesus, might no longer live for themselves, but for him. Because he is life. Jesus is life. We alone are under a curse of death. That we would live for him, who for our sake, their sake, our sake, died and was raised. As our world continues to change, followers of Jesus must remain the same. Steadfast in the gospel. We're to be a people of the gospel. People who are all about Jesus. Individuals who know and live belonging to Jesus. Living in humility. Stepping out in God-empowered boldness for others. Excited to be reconciled ambassadors of eternal life to our world. What might this look like for you in life right now? Our circumstances might change, but our hope doesn't. Let's pray that God would loose whatever it is that might be binding us, that we would live in the fullness of Him, that we would live as the people of the gospel that He saved us to be. Let's pray. Lord God, we want to commit ourselves to You at the start of a new week. Lord, we pray that You would work in us to be Your people. Lord, to be humble, to be bold, Lord, to be selfless, Lord, to live for you, to live as you would have us, Lord Jesus, in the world around us, as the world retreats. Lord, we pray that by your Spirit, you would empower us to step up, Lord, to point people to you for your glory, for our good, for the sake of our world, that they would know you, Lord Jesus, and be saved. And we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Well, let's stand and sing as the musicians uh, gather behind me. Let's stand and sing uh, our final song today. What a great challenge from Rob. Why don't we sing together our song from age to age?
Well, friends, how might you be an ambassador for Christ this week? If you're in isolation, if you're still out and about in the community, how can you be pointing at your neighbours to the love of Jesus Christ? How can you be showing them this hope? How can you be loving at your community? Let's be encouraging each other to do that this week. Uh, jump onto the Facebook group. Let's keep uh, expressing our unity together. But as we go out this week as ambassadors for our Saviour Jesus, uh, remember that we don't do this alone. We do it together, united in the Lord Jesus as brothers and sisters, but we do it with God uh, as our power, as our strength. Paul finishes his letter to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let me pray. Our Lord God, we thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you for the technology that means we can uh, still meet, that we can sit under your word, that we can be encouraged to live uh, as your ambassadors. Lord, remind us each day of what you have accomplished through the Lord Jesus, that you have saved us, that you've called us to yourself, and that you give us the great privilege of proclaiming this good news of a risen Saviour to our world. Would you use us uh, to pronounce this hope in a world gripped uh, by fear of coronavirus? Lord, would you use us this week uh, to show the love of the Lord Jesus? And we ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Friends, thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the same spot right here on Facebook and on YouTube next week. Have a great week.